All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at sponge uh, form and function. And just look at some of the different things going on with sponges. First, we'll look at feeding. Uh, sponges are suspension filter feeders. They feed on collecting particles from the water, essentially the particles that they just pass through their system. And you can kind of see there how water flows through the sponge. It comes from the outside through these pores and then in through the um, body cavity here and out the top of this area here called the osculum. Um, so a couple things here. The outer layer of the sponges are called um, the is called the panacoderm, which I'll show you that in a second. And um, these internal pores are called the dermal ostea, which I don't have a picture of the dermal ostea here, but you can kind of see what's going on here with the uh, these inner pores. Um, they are very small. They direct the water flow through, and it's directed past these choanocytes, and this is where the food is actually collected on these choanocytes, which we'll look at that in a little bit. They basically will eat anything that they can filter, um, and so any sort of living thing or even um, so dead material, they will basically eat through phagocytosis, which you can see here. There's a picture of the choanocyte, and it's kind of taking in food particles so very very simple sort of thing they're absorbing those nutrients from the water just basically through diffusion and the water is expelled out through this uh, hole called the osculum and that brings us to this next idea which is the canal system um so you can see here the osteum the dermal osteum those those pores there uh, so there are three basic canal systems. There's the Asconid canal system. This is the simplest kind of system. These things remind me of like paint rollers. Um, so basically water is taken in through the dermal ostea and then expelled out this large osculum here. You could actually feel the water coming from that if you were to just put your hand over it. Um, choanocytes kind of line this inner cavity called the spongial seal. It's not a true body cavity because sponges don't have true tissues. And so it's it's kind of resembles that, though. You have this cavity called the spongia seal. And um, <clears throat> the asconid has a lot less surface area for feeding. Um, and so usually these sponges are just long tube-shaped sponges, as you can see here and here. Next are called the siconids. And the sicanids are usually larger than asconoids, and the reason they're larger is because they have increased their surface area to volume ratio, which allows them to be bigger. Um, body wall is thicker, a lot more complex. You can see this here. You kind of have, uh, you still have an osculum, but notice you have a lot more surface area on these areas here, collecting in water through these pores, sending it into that inner sponge seal and going out. And you can see this area here is lined with choanocytes. And so you have a lot more surface area to volume ratio. Um, the sponge the sponge seal has a smaller diameter. And so this is going to direct water and it's going to, again, allow um, more surface area to volume those sponges or those choanocytes are becoming in more contact with more water. Uh, and the last one is called leuconids. And so this is the most complex. Um, this allows, again, sponges to increase in size because there's greatest, greater surface area for feeding. Uh, lots and lots of tiny chambers. See here these tiny chambers. Each one of them is lined with choanocytes. See here it's called a flagellated chamber just means that there's a lot of flagella in there back from those um, from those choanocytes. You can see here the osculum is not as pronounced. There's several osculum. You can kind of see it over here, these several different holes. Um, a single leuconid sponge may have like 2 million feeding chambers. And so um, a lot more efficiency as far as being able to take in nutrients and so that you can expect some of these sponges can grow really big. A couple of uh, just straight up um, 
anatomical things. Uh, so first of all, this, here's the picture of the sponge wall. This is kind of a cross section of a sponge. And here you see more of a, a cartoony kind of version of that. And so you have the mesenchyme, which uh, you can see here, there's this kind of bluey thing. You can probably see the mesenchyme over here too. Yeah, mesophyll is another word for that. Or mesohyl. It's this uh, gelatinous matrix. And that's essentially what it is. It's just an extracellular matrix. There's uh, the skeletal parts are found in there. The sponges, the sponge and the spicules are found in that. And it's kind of where all everything else is embedded in that. There you got the choanocytes here. Here's a good picture of those choanocytes. So you have the this collar here, which is where all the food is kind of being collected. And then you have the flagella, which are kind of whipping around, causing the water flow to come in. You also have these cells called archocytes in here. You can see the little archocytes, those purpley looking cells. I don't think we have archocytes over here. And there are amoeboid cells. Amoeboid cells just means that they don't have a definite shape. And that what they do is they're, they're basically, um, they take in particles from the outside and they create the spongin and the spicules. Um, they move throughout the mesenchyme and they have several functions. They're almost like um, sponge um, stem cells in a way. And so you can imagine them kind of moving throughout and doing several things. And then you have these panacocytes and they're going to make up what's called the panacoderm. And you see that over here and it's the outermost layer of the sponge. It's the closest thing that a sponge has to a tissue. That is an actual uh, functioning, a bunch of cells working together doing a similar function. Panacoderm is the closest thing to that. It would be analogous to like our epidermis. And then lastly, uh, reproduction of sponges. Sponges can reproduce sexually or asexually. Um, most sponges are monitious, and that monitious means, remember, that they have both male and female sex cells. Um, they can reproduce um, through uh, sexual reproduction. Um, so you have the sperm cell will actually swim in through the side, just like everything else, right? Comes in through those pores and will fertilize the egg cells. And uh, the zygote will basically house in that parent sponge. And then it will swim off and the larva will swim off and plant and create new sponge. Um, they can also reproduce asexually through budding or fragmentation, uh, which is another thing that can occur. And so they are able to just a piece can break off and kind of start growing. Or you see here there's budding that can occur. And, um, and so you get both sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction allows for speed, but sexual reproduction allows for variation. And this is one of the reasons why sponges have been so successful.